Hello and welcome to Cardboard Guide. In this video we're going to take you on a trip down memory lane because we're going to look at our booster pack collection. So stay tuned for a little trip down memory lane and a gorgeous peek at all those beautiful, beautiful magic booster packs through the ages. We hope you enjoyed. Let's check out our booster pack collection. Okay, so we are here with one of our booster pack binders. And what we do here is that we actually collect separate booster packs from each set. And that's something we started doing around, I think, the original Ixalan set. Here you can see some of the recent packs. And how we do this is that we take a little sturdy sleeve here and then you put in the booster pack. And then you take a booster pack wrapper and place it in there and remove the little tape strip and fold it down and there you have it it is now sealed for perpetuity and then it gets right down there in the box and that was murders at Carlo Manor and we have not been buying any of these sets so when you see us putting these boosters into the sleeves and into the booster pack collection it is actually just that single booster pack that we bought because we want to keep going with the collection and it's a sort of fun nostalgic way to enjoy but i think you forgot to mention we also oh, have yeah, this I line do. off camera yeah but let's see what was that one thing is of course that was outlaws of thunder junction one thing is of course the newer packs but we also have something kind of old in here yes so you need to so. uh, hang on so you can see that later on but as Jens just said these are the newer packs and then we have I think we're up to maybe having 13 the last 13 years unbroken every single booster pack and then we of course we go all the way back to 1994 um, but we don't have all of those of course exactly and this is the newest of the binders you can see it starts with the uh, Wilds of Eldraine. And also do notice the draft and the play boosters now. Yes. But yeah, we also have some of the core sets. So core 13, 14, 15, Magic Origins, the 1920, 21, and a special one from the 21 that was actually gifted to us from Savannah Lion. Yes, and it's very cool because it is one of the misprints one. Uh, this has been documented that there is a misprint version here, so you can. it should be silver everywhere where it is transparent. And it was part of the, uh, yeah, I don't know how many, but a part of the production ended up being transparent instead of silver. So it's kind of cool. It's like a misprint pack. Yeah, you can see straight through it. So those are some of the older core sets going There's forward. So Modern Masters, Infinity, a special token pack, a mystery booster pack. Yes. So here comes some of the master sets and a little more of the master sets. And right here we're going to have a pack that's going to have a special place in my heart. And that is... Oh, it fit. I was kind of worried it wouldn't fit <laughs> because it's a, a pretty big pack. It's 20 cards, is it? Uh, 15 cards. 15 cards. Okay, it just looks really... Uh, yeah, it's like a lot bigger than massive. the rest. But it is, of course, the very special set for Jens. And, and again, we did not buy the entire uh, booster box, just uh, a single. The fallout. Yeah, actually, I think I bought six packs or something. Yeah. It was too cheap to buy an entire collector display. It was simply too expensive. But I bought the, the pip by art cards that I needed as singles. And then I bought, I think I bought six collector booster packs and one of them is here for the collection of yes. course and i don't think Ooh. we haven't decided that quite yet but i actually don't think we usually buy universes beyond but this is a special case because jens has been a fallout fanboy since forever indeed so we had to make an exception so uh, but, we, was, yep. yeah, but that's, this is the newest one we also have a third one that we probably won't get to today but we do still have a very special and unique booster pack, at least for us. Um, but I think, should we just 
Yeah, we're Show going the to. Older one. I think we're going to the old binder now. So. We hope that you're enjoying this trip down memory lane. If you are, please hit the subscribe button and consider smashing the like button. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're now going to our oldest binder because you know money doesn't grow on the trees. <laughs> so, yeah, we need to actually be a little aware, cost sensible as to what we buy. But of course, we would like to have one of every pack. And we are we actually go. also getting there. We're getting there slowly but surely. But as you can see, we do start all the way back with Fallen Empires. Um, so you have like a special story with these four. Where, uh, where does this place you in your oh, yeah. memory? This is the beginning of my magic experience. I think Fallen Empires had just gotten out of print when I started playing Magic, but you could Which buy... Which is kind of a joke because Fallen yeah. Empires was never really <laughs> never out, out of print. print. <laughs> <laughs> but you could still get 4th edition, which also didn't ever get out of print, and that's why 4th edition is worth nothing. And Ice Age, which was also overprinted very so much. So we started actually, both of us, around the same time. Um, separately, of course, we didn't know each other back then. Um, but we also started just about too late to have anything that was like truly valuable in the booster pack collection here. Yeah, but it, it's fun to see the old packs. All of them had this, you know, egg kind of shaped um, on them. And it also said a Richard Garfield game. And, uh, and notice also how many cards are in each, in each pack. In the beginning, it was not that many. You have eight, eight cards. And that was also the case with um, Arabian Nights, I believe. It also only had eight cards, which made it less desirable for people to buy it, which is a joke now, of course. Indeed. But, but yeah, then uh, came Ice Age and 4th edition that had 15 cards, and that was the standard until, what was it called? Homelands. Um, but yeah, no Homelands here. But we have a 5th edition and a 6th edition, and we have a little slot here. Yes. And maybe the pack that we're going to be placing today should fit here. So let us know down in the comment section if you know what pack we are talking about. Yes, and no about. cheating. You have no to cheating. pause, go comment what pack should be right here in this slot. And yeah, and while you are typing, I can tell you that this is one of a very iconic set for me. I remember when this came out and it was absolutely broken, but it also held some of my most beloved cards, which is, of course, Elves. Yes, and it was back in the old combo. So let's see it. There you have it. Bursa Saga. And also do notice that it says Expert Level. Yes. <laughs> that was something that they did, you know, around this time. You had core sets and then you had supplemental sets and then they had a certain level on them to indicate how hard the cards were to play with. But yeah, they went away with that, of course. So let's slide it. And these are not among some there. of the more cheap packs. Nope. Ursa Saga to this day is still very valuable. And that is, of course, because you have the opportunity to pull some fairly cool cards that are worth a lot of money from these packs. Exactly. So what, for instance, could you get in a Saga pack? You could get GS Cradle, which would be the, the heavy hit. But the entire land cycle, one in each color, is actually fairly expensive in this. And they all came in the Ursa Saga. And that's also what made this um, booster pack very expensive. Yes, and there is, of course, in the Ursa block both Ursa's Saga, Ursa's Legacy, and Ursa's Destiny. And we have the Destiny and the Saga, but not the Legacy yet. Nope. But yet. we are, yes, we are working on acquiring that one as well. So should but we just go through yeah, the, the binder, so of I'm course? I'm thinking that it might be fun for people to just see the rest of the binder of yeah. our old stuff. Yeah, and also notice, you know, around this time, there was also a shift into the side of the packs. You went away with the round shape and you got a full art pack. And at that point, the different packs also had different arts. Yes. Which is something that we don't see, I believe, anymore. Not, I mean, maybe until not the Masters, relatively yeah. recently you had the different packs. But it's also kind of fun to see because uh, the value between packs can actually change a bit depending on the pack art because some of the pack art is just more iconic. Um, yeah. yeah. 
for instance, uh, in the fourth edition, I would have liked to have the Minotaur, uh, the Minotaur pack. But yeah, Vegas can't be choosers. <laughs> exactly. And still, it's very cool. Yeah, and also notice that this one is advanced level because it's a core set, and there you have the expert level. Yes. So let's just and again, flip through. Brief reminder: we do actually have the homelands right there. Yeah. Um, and there was also an eight trade wool card. Yes, um, but just to say that this is not a complete set because when we go back to the older ones, we're buying slowly and also. Uh, you know, depending on when we can acquire them. So our most recent 13 years is like an unbroken, uh, you know, cycle of cards where we have each and every set. Uh, the older ones is something we're still working on. But here, I just have to say that Weatherlights is kind of a personal favorite. There is a lot of reserveless cards in this set. Like I think 72 of the rares are actually um, reserveless. Just a lot of them actually. Yeah. And Mirage is, of course, also a really, really cool set. Exactly. You have the Grin Totem, but you also have the Lion's Eye Diamond. Yes, and but in terms of flavor, you also have this like African-themed, yeah. um, also on all the basic lands, has some really cool, and they connect. I remember, as far as I remember, this set is the one where all the different lands connect to like an entire tableau, which is really cool. Do let us know as we flip to these pages, um, which of the sets are your favorite sets. Exactly, and also alliances, of course, with Force of Will, if you are lucky, only as an uncommon card at that point. Tempest, Mercadian Masks, Nemesis. Invasion and Apocalypse. I have no real recollection of these sets. No, actually. I think I was out. I mean, like most yeah. people, we've been in and out of Magic a couple of times. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't remember playing these. Exactly. I remember Torment. I think I went back again with Torment I feel Judgment. Like, yeah, I feel like I'm the opposite. I think I was back again for Odyssey for like just a brief, brief period. And I can't remember if this is a 7th or 8th edition. I think it's an 8th edition. Yeah, um, I believe so. Yeah, and that's when I went all in. I bought a lot of 8th edition. And yeah, that was a poor investment. <laughs> 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 but I, I really love the cards. And uh, yeah, it it's had never a, lot a of poor else. investment if you still enjoy the cards. Yeah, and Onslaught, I went back in heavily uh, on the Onslaught. That's more, that was a very, very great set and had a lot of elves. Yeah, and it was fun to play. I do believe there's also quite a good deal of goblins. Goblins and elves mostly tend to show up together. Also, I feel yeah. like there's a lot of set where they are like the predominant tribal creature types. Yeah, exactly. And legions had some absolutely shoot creatures. It was at that time very broken. I think we had a 13-13 tramble something. <laughs> And, and that card was actually very valuable at that time. Now it's you know, worth nothing. Same goes with Blistering Firecat that's on this uh, front page. But yeah. But it's just, you know, it's a fun trip down memory lane. See and one of my favorite sets there, Lorwyn. It mm. was just, it was beautiful. It was magical. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping like, I think that both Throne of Eldraine and Wilds of Eldraine did sort of hark back to that type of storytelling and the, also like the, the way that the art was created. But I feel like Bloomberry might also pick up some of that vibe that was back in Lorwyn. It was a very beautiful, beautiful set, I think. Yeah, indeed. And also notice that it, no longer it's a Richard Garfield game. Yeah. That is gone. But you still have the levels. Yes. So I think you might not have on these, actually. When we flip to them. Nope. Nope. The levels is also gone at that point. Now we have come to, to more recent times. Um, I remember I stopped playing Magic around Kamigawa. I hated the set. I was like, I'm out. No more for me. <laughs> and then I became an angry old man and uh, I was out for a long time. And then I started work at some point and uh, I had a colleague that played and that was around Everson Restored. And but I do also remember you again. meeting a woman telling you not to ditch your entire <laughs> magic collection. Would you believe it? Jens was actually going to more or less just throw out his remaining Magic the Gathering collection. I was like, well, maybe we shouldn't because again, I had already learned from experience that I'm in and then I'm out of Magic and then I'm back in. So I was <laughs> like, maybe we should just hang on to it. And luckily yeah. he was persuaded to hang on to it. 
Uh, I think that was a good move. Yes, <laughs> I think that was a pretty decent. But yeah, move. without you, my magic collection might have been in the garbage bin. That's that's scary to a, think. A, a sad thought, also because that has brought us a lot of uh, fun times over the years playing Magic the Gathering. So even though we might not be at an amazing spot with Magic right now, um, we still do have a ton of fun playing. Indeed. But yeah, we got in around everything restored. And I remember that we went to some of our first tournaments around the Theros block that we both yes. loved. And I really, really did much. love it. The whole Greco roaming setting was, yeah, that was just cool. And there was some amazing art. And so it was a cool time for Angels as well, because, mm. you know, there was the whole Addison story going on at that point as well. Oh, yeah. And also, <laughs> yeah. Or, and but Elspeth, actually. It was Elspeth, not Addison. Uh, Elspeth, that was, you know, good friends with um, Ajani and the whole storyline going on to remind ourselves. When yeah, but of course you had uh, Alison and Everson. Yeah, 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 sure. But uh, Elspeth was like the main figure, figuring out where she was from and everything. Yeah, but it, it, it's you know, fun to think that we came into Magic first time with Ice Age and 4th Edition and we went back with Gate Crash and Dragon's Maze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we've had the excellent worst timing, timing excellent worst timing, timing all the way. Yeah, but it and was it's also fun. yeah, and it's fun to think that that you know these packs, it's around two thousand and thirteen, so they're already you know eleven above ten years old. Yeah, which is sure. insane to imagine because it feels like it was yesterday, right? Definitely doesn't feel like it's been ten plus years. Battle for Syndica, the very famous Battle for Syndica, where you had the full out lands for the and, first time. And my, my friends, if you have not been around for that long, it was a huge thing. I remember we were like saving up and buying as much as we could because like the, the prospect of actually playing out all our decks with full art lands, that was just too cool. And I mean, by now everything has full art lands and people are starting to go back through, you know, retro lands yeah. that are not full art because that's by far more special now. But yeah, around that time, that was really a huge deal. We're still missing a conspiracy booster pack. Let us know, hook us up. Yeah, hook us <laughs> up. <laughs> Slide into the DMs and let us know where to find a conspiracy pack. And here we are at the end of this collection. Yes. And between the two, the two binders you've seen, we have another one, which is the most complete part of the collection. Yeah, that goes from after Hour of Devastation, I think it up goes into Wilds of Eldrain. Yeah, exactly. So that was the little trip down memory lane. We hope you had a blast watching it with us. But before you go, let us know what your favorite pack was from the entire collection. And if we didn't have it, let us know what your favorite set in Magic is. And if you want to see more of this kind of deep dive into our collection, whether it be Magic the Gathering, Flesh and Blood even maybe, or Sorcery Contested Realm, let us know down below in the comment section what you want to see from our collection. Thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to all our YouTube channel members and also Patreon members. You really make this happen and we appreciate each and every one of you. We will see you in the next video.